Hello, my name is Vic and welcome back to another Caden Live 2021 tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how I personally use Caden Live. I'm going to share some tips with regards to some of my favorite keyboard shortcuts and some of the workflows that I use in my process. There is no wrong or right answer in this video. I'm sure that you've also developed your own workflows. I just wanted to share mine and hopefully it might help you. For this video, we are using version 21.04.1. Before we get started, let's just make sure that we're looking at the same thing. I'm going to switch over to the editing workspace so that everybody's looking at the same interface. Just go ahead and click on editing. When I first started using Caden Live, I remember looking at the clip monitor, which is our middle window over here and thinking to myself, why would we have a separate clip monitor. Uh, it seems to me like it's a waste of space. It's something that I don't really use. And later on, I found out that the clip monitor is actually a really great tool for finding a specific part of a video that you want to use without doing so much cutting, pasting, and moving in your timeline. Let's go ahead and demonstrate what I mean. I'm going to bring in a few clips here in our for our sample. And basically, if you've been using Caden Live, you'll notice that whatever you select in your project bin is what shows up in your clip monitor. For example, if I'm selecting this yoga video, we'll see it here. I can play it. Obviously, there's nothing. I didn't drag it into my timeline, so there's nothing show up on my project monitor. If I click on the beach setting, we have it there. And if I click on a different video here, you'll also notice that if the video has sound, it has a waveform. Now, this is another setting that I've configured for myself to suit my purposes. Normally, you would see something like this, where if you hover over and if the video has sound, you would see the waveform. Now, well, that's fine and good, but I actually really like the fact that I can continue to see the waveform without hovering too much. It helps me find a specific part of the video that I might be interested in. So let's demonstrate how the clip monitor can help us do that. I'm going to switch back over to the yoga video over here because this is a better example. And let's just play through and we'll see what kind of movements this lady does. Let's say I want to capture that movement when she's going from downward facing dog to a low plank, excuse my yoga, or like a low cobra position, if that's correct. So we'll go ahead and go back there. And this is a really great tip. And I love using this function is setting the in and out point of a video using your clip monitor. So to set the in point, we've got a couple of ways. You can set it using the toolbar over here. What I like to do is I like to keep it keyboard shortcuts. So simply you just press I to set the in point and then we can navigate to where the next motion that we want and we can set the out point. And in this case, the keyboard shortcut is simply letter O and you can see that we've got a section here that's highlighted. Now what happens is if I bring this down into my timeline, all that we're going to see in our project now is just that action. And I love this because it's a really clean way of doing your cuts without having to do it in your timeline. Before, what I would do is, let me just reset the in and out points here. I'll just set it back to full. I would add the whole clip into my timeline. I would look for that action maybe here. I'd do a cut there and then I do a cut here and then I have to select these clips delete delete and then move it so you can see that there's so many more steps involved doing that way so I prefer and this is just my tip my preference to do it using the clip monitor so let's go back to our example and let's say I want to capture another pose that she's doing so let me just say she's from this position, I'll set another in point and another out point. And like before, we'll see a highlighted section. And if I bring this in, it's going to go directly into that action. So we see there. And then let me see if I can bring it back somewhere random. I'll set the in point here. And you'll notice that it'll reset 
our highlighted sections. I'll set the out point. And then if I drag that down here, what's going to happen is it's going to select only those pieces that we've set in and out. There you have it. Just a quick tip for you that the clip monitor is very useful for that purpose. Another way that you can take advantage of the clip monitor is going into your logging workspace. So let's just click on that. And in our logging workspace, we've got some space here to enter some project notes. We can set the in and out point here as well. I don't use the logging so much. I don't have uh, very long clips, but I can imagine that this would be very helpful for someone with more complex projects. We're back on our editing workspace here and let's demonstrate another example. I'll bring this into my timeline. A great way to navigate zoom in and out of your timeline is using the control key. So if I'm holding down the control key, and using the mouse wheel, I can zoom in and out of the clip and in, in and out of my timeline. I mean, if I'm holding the control key and pressing the left click button, I can also move the timeline left to right. So it's a great way for you to navigate. You can also hold the mouse wheel, press the mouse wheel, and then you can scroll left and right as well and move around your timeline. So just a couple of quick tips. What I loved again about Caden Live is just the ease of the workflow and just the style of how they want you to do your work and your editing. The toolbar is essential for you to do your cutting, your clipping, and your moving. And I recommend using the keyboard shortcuts because it just makes life a lot easier. The keyboard shortcuts that I use a lot is cutting or the razor tool which is just X on your keyboard. You can switch to your razor tool. You can make your cuts. And if you press S, you can go back to your selection tool. Notice that the cursor has changed and it's also highlighted here in the toolbar. Now I can select my different clips and move it around. I can move it to a different track if I wanted to. And the other very useful shortcut that I find is the move tool. So, or the spacer tool, which is M. So it's a good way to memorize it. M for move, so you can move things around. Another quick tip for you, say you want to use the move tool, but you want everything else to stay in place. A good way to do that is to lock your video track. So you can lock a track. I could press M for the spacer tool and I only want to move this section. I don't want to move the top two. Whereas for example, if I unlock video track two, and if I press the M tool, the move, the spacer tool, if I move it, it's going to move everything together. So if you only want to use the, the spacer tool for a singular track, you can lock the track. Let me lock video track number one, press M for the spacer tool. Now I can just move video track number two. That's a quick tip. I'm going to unlock video track number one. And let me just add another track over here. And let me make some random cuts because I want to demonstrate something else. In your timeline, a great way to move around and navigate to the beginning of each of these little clips that you've cut up is to hold the Alt button and use the arrow keys to navigate. So I'm just holding down Alt and using arrow key left to move between the cuts. This is a great way for you to quickly move between cuts in your timeline. My next tip is, and of course, this is just my personal preference, is that I try to use as little tracks as possible. I've noticed that some people will use up to six video tracks, six audio tracks, and even I've seen projects up to 12 audio tracks. And while that looks pretty amazing and complicated to me, I like to keep things very simple. And of course, this is just my personal preference. I try to use as little video tracks as possible. So at a maximum, I stick to three video tracks. I might add another audio track, maybe a background music track at the bottom here, but that's pretty much my limit. And circling back to my tip in the beginning regarding the use of the clip monitor to do your initial cutting 
it really helped me minimize the number of tracks that I use. And my next tip is basically let the audio waveform in your video clips guide you. There might be some points of interest based on the waveform that you would like to do your cutting. This already has background music, so it may not be the best example, but let's say there's a spike in the audio. That's usually an indication that there is um, someone talking or there's an activity that's happening. So for very long clips, I find that if you're using the waveform, it can help guide you to where those points of interest are in your video. And of course, let's say this is my point of interest. I can set the in and out points in that area and then drag that into my timeline. And then I can go from there. I can make some secondary cuts and final cutting in my project timeline after that. And finally, my last tip of the day is for you to not be afraid to customize Caden Live's interface according to your needs. I've done a very, very small customization. I try to keep everything at a default because I just think it's already well laid out. But the one small thing that I'd change though is this tool over here. And here it's called Extract Clip. I'll talk about what it does first and then I'll show you how to add this handy dandy little toolbar here. I'll just bring in a new clip here. And let's say that I'm gonna make a cut right here. And let's say that I don't need this segment. I only need this section. What I normally do is I will press delete and I'll have a space here and I can right click and remove space. So there's about three steps in that process. Let me just undo. This handy dandy little tool here helps me do that into two steps. Basically selecting the clip and clicking on extracting clip. It'll remove that clip and automatically move my whatever is next here in line. It'll remove that space. So just to demonstrate with another example, let me click on this one and let's say I want to remove this and move everything behind it forward. I can press this extract clip function again and remove that clip and move everything forward. So that's a very handy tool to make some final editing cuts, some points that you re really don't like and you want to move everything forward. So it's a two step click. I love it. So this is the way that you add that tool. I think at a default, this is called extract timeline zone or something like that. I don't really find that super useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click on this and configure toolbars. And we've got some options here. I'll just move this to the side. We've got the main toolbar, which is this one, which we don't really want to change. We've got an extra toolbar, which I don't know where this is. It just has the render button. So we're not going to change that. The one that we want to change is our timeline toolbar here. And notice that in the current action section, this is what is currently on there. Um, it looks like it's actually disappeared. So this might be a bit tricky, but you can see here it's laid out as it is. We've got extract clip, we've got separator. And lastly, it's got the edit subtitle tool. So let me cancel out. Let's just remember these last two. And what you can see here is we've got the edit subtitle tool. We've got a separator and we've got the audio mixer. So does that make sense? So we've got some toolbars, some separators. That's what they look like. And when we edit this out, configure toolbar, we go back to timeline toolbar. Sorry, it disappears. So it's pretty hard to tell what that is. But if we go down here, We've got the override clip zone. That's where I want to add the extract clip button. So let me just type in extract to search for it. So we've got extract timeline zone. This was the original. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the original back in. It's adding it to the very last here. Let's just click apply, see what happens. And you'll notice that it's added that new function here. So now what I can do is if I want to move this forward next, I'll find the tool that's next to it. It says overwrite clip. I'll remember that we'll go to configure again. It's not the most straightforward thing, but I think you're getting the idea. So it's crack clip to timeline zone. I can move this up. Let me just find where that was. 
there we go. So extract clip to timeline zone. If I press apply, okay. Now we've got that tool that we just added back. So extract clip to timeline zone. But this is not very useful. This is probably the default here. And what I did was I just removed that. So in order to remove that, you just configure toolbars. Same thing again, timeline toolbar. We'll find, here we go, extract timeline zip. And I will just move this back to where it belongs or out of the way. So I click apply and now it's gone. And I just have my handy dandy extract clip tool, which I love. That's it for today, guys. Do you have any Kid and Live workflow tips that you'd like to share? Please share in the comments. Thank you so much for your time today. I hope you learned something new. The best way to support the channel is to give the channel a subscribe. Give this video a like. If you've got any questions, try to post it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Until next time, bye-bye.